there are times when I'm just overwhelmed by the problems of the world. They, they seem so great, and I'm not sure if they can ever be solved. You know, for instance, climate change. You know, we, we know that the seas are rising and we're losing coastland, but yet there are droughts, there are floods, there are wildfires, and there are the loss of species every year. Will we ever do what it takes to really get climate change under control so that life can continue on this planet? Here's something you probably don't know, but in the United States, in most of the states, $27,000 more are spent to house one prisoner than to educate one child. Think about that. We spend $27,000 more a year to incarcerate someone than to educate a child. And if that isn't bad enough, $3 billion a year is spent in the United States on school safety to harden schools so that active shooters have more difficulty getting in. But yet our children aren't safe. We know that the shootings continue to happen. Will we ever deal with these inequities and keeping our children safe and and everything that goes with that. Last year, the UN estimated that there are 117 million refugees and asylum seekers in the world. 117 million is about a third of the population of the United States. Where are these people gonna go? Will they ever find a safe place? What's happening to that many people? The problems are so great, and what can any of us do? That's what I want to talk about today. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel, as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. I know that there are many people who find spirituality and spiritual practice attractive because they find that it's a place where they can be at peace, that they can create a cocoon from themselves to, to distance themselves from the enormity of the problems of the world. But that's not what spirituality is meant to be about. That's not what the great traditions teach us. In Buddhism, the Dalai Lama is very clear in his teaching that our spiritual practice is meant to help us learn compassion first for ourselves, but then that compassion needs to grow to compassion for others and ultimately to compassion for all living beings so that there are circles of compassion waving out from us. The teachings of Jesus are very similar in this, that in order to save one's life, we have to lose it for the sake of others. To save one's life, we lose it for others. In Islam, this teaching is a bit different, but it's very similar. It's built into the, the value of charity, which is foundational in Islam. Because all people are children of God, therefore we need to give whatever we have, that we need to share everything that we are. So these traditions all teach us that our growth, our spiritual development, are about extending ourselves beyond ourselves. But how do we do that whenever the problems of the world are so big? What difference can we really make? In this, I often think of the words of Dorothy Day. Dorothy Day was a 20th century saint who gave up her life to live with the poor and, and formed communities, small household communities, to work with the poor, not just to provide meals, they did that, but they also worked to provide, to, to really root out systemic poverty, the issues behind poverty. And she was often asked, well, what difference does your work make? There are so many poor people and there's just you and your few followers. And Dorothy Day was very clear in said, saying, don't worry about being effective. Instead, concentrate on being faithful. For Dorothy Day, 
the focus wasn't about the end result. It was instead taking one day at a time and being faithful to the task of working to solve poverty, to working to uproot injustice. Dorothy Day wasn't the first person to have this kind of insight. It's actually a very ancient insight that's found in the Jewish Talmud written millennia ago. In the Talmud, it's written, don't be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justice now, love mercy now, walk humbly now. You're not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon the work. You're not free to abandon the work. So this ancient wisdom was that we need to do what we can where we are to bring justice, to bring compassion, to bring hope where we are. I think it's important for us to think about how we do that. What are the things we can do in our daily lives? Perhaps that's being kind to people we encounter in the street, in the grocery store, wherever we are. Perhaps that's checking up on our neighbors to make sure they have what they need. Perhaps it's volunteering our time and being engaged in some sort of social project. Perhaps it's, it's donating money to different causes. Perhaps it's many different things that we can do to help bring change into the world, to make the world a better place, and slowly begin to address the enormity of the world's problems. I think that John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, said it best when he wrote, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Wesley's vision is that throughout our lives we should continue to strive to do the good that we can do in the world, to make the world better as a reflection of that deeper reality that we experience through our spiritual practice. So how do you continue to do that? How do you take the steps to move beyond spirituality as a cocoon of safety, to engage in the world, to bring change? That's the challenge for all of us. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, leave me some comments, and know that I appreciate the time you spend on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Thanks and have a great day.